Hey guys, I hope you're having a great blessed day so far. Um, I just got done with the gym. I know you're not here to see my pretty face, but it's a little disheveled, so excuse me for that. I really hope that everything I say to you is Holy Spirit inspired. And I ask that you pray for me so that everything I am speaking is Holy Spirit inspired and it is not me speaking. Of course, if there's opinions or this or that, I could be wrong. Um, and that's fine. We will find out more as time goes on as to putting the puzzle together, the rapture puzzle and the end times puzzle. We could be wrong about different theories and things, um, and that's fine. God is gonna reveal more to us as we go on, but I really hope and pray that everything I'm saying is Holy Spirit inspired. So please pray for me for that. And thank you guys, because I know you, you will. Um, so I got done with the gym and got to my car and I have a little Bible in there. And I just felt that I needed to look up 2 Timothy 3 and 4, where it talks about the last days. And I wanted to share it with you guys. And I'll just start by reading God's word. So 2 Timothy 4, starting in verse 3 through verse 5, it says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. For they will have itching ears. They will accumulate to themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So from the very beginning, okay, it says, For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. I believe we're in that time right now. We have been in that time for a while, but it's just getting worse and worse as time goes on. And we can plainly see that because there's so many false teachers, there's so many false prophets. Uh, look at all these prosperity teachers, all these um, uh, wealth teachers and saying that if you believe in Jesus, then all of your worldly and earthly sorrows will just disappear, which we know from God's word that that's definitely not true. God will take care of you, but that doesn't mean that you are guaranteed a million bucks by the time that you retire or before then or that you have a successful business or that you're living in a certain house and that you have so many kids okay um you can pray for health and you can ask that whatever blessings god gives you he will overflow your cup so you can bless other people but definitely don't be praying for stuff for you just for you if you need um help with the rent then you have to have faith that god is going to provide and pray about that but you shouldn't be praying about um oh i really want my business you can pray for success in your business there's nothing wrong with that but also pray that god is glorified through your business and don't be asking for millions of dollars or, oh, I really want this nice car or this and that, like a lot of prosperity teachers preach, right? We accumulate, the world is accumulating teachers to satisfy what, they, what their ears want to hear. So Christian, be careful about what you are listening to. And that being said, right there in verse four, it says that people will wander off into myths. And look what's going on today, the alien deception. Um, there's so many different new age religions that are up and rising and all of the myriad of religions that you can choose from, that there's more than one way to God and there's more than one way to heaven. I've heard people say with my very ears, Friends and family say there's more than one way to God. That's not true. Uh, there's only one way, and that's through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So be careful about what you are getting yourself into. Um, there are a lot of churches that proclaim to be Christian, and yet they are teaching New Age religion. So it's very important 
get into your Bible and and use your discernment the Holy Spirit gives you to discern the spirits and test the spirits because you want to know the truth. People who are living of the world, they don't want to know the truth, okay? They may have grown up in a Christian household, for example. They may have heard over and over again from family and friends about Jesus and the truth about Jesus, but they have rejected it and they may eventually come to Christ. They may not. We need to pray for these people, of course, but it's just an example to show you that if you have someone like that in your life, it's because the world has brought them a certain way. The, the world, Satan, has been feeding lies into their life. So that way they do not believe what is right, but they believe what is false. That they are drawn to these myths, to these other religions, to what the world would say is truth, but is indeed just a great deception. So, and not only that, this alien deception, <laughs> the Watchmen community talks about it all the time. And there are... Christians that do believe in aliens and I'm here to tell you that there's no such thing as aliens they are demonic manifestations that's what they are there's nowhere in the holy word of God where it talks about extraterrestrial beings everything that we need is here and there's nothing in there but extraterrestrial beings so why would we believe it there's a lot of stuff in there about the supernatural angels and demons because they're real. Um, there are some Christians that are skeptical about uh, supernatural encounters, and I do believe that they are real. I have had an encounter with a demon before, and it was not pretty. I was like 15, maybe younger than that, like 15 years old or something. My mom has had a encounter before, and many of you guys have. And you know why? It's because Satan's mad, okay? His little minions are upset and they're attacking you in some way and trying to scare you into telling the truth or into doing what's right into what, and take you away from what God wants you to do. They're just trying to scare you, but don't let them. Um, I have sometimes felt like a a presence just nearby, you know, uh, wherever I'm at. And my husband always tells me, and it's not a good presence. My husband always tells me, you know, uh, Jesus is with you. You, ha you should not be scared at all. That is just the demonic trying to scare you. That's it. But don't let it take courage. Jesus is your strength. He's with you. You're not there by yourself. Jesus has already won this war. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you're right. So I'm saying this to me just as much as I am to you guys to not be scared of that, um, to take courage in Jesus. He is our strength. And placing your faith in him is not only, I mean, it gives you eternal life, but Jesus protects you. You are protected from the demonic. So you have nothing to worry about. But yeah, these things are real. Um, and it's not an extraterrestrial life form. It's a demonic manifestation. It's demons. Um, so please, Christian, if that's you and you are not really sure what to think about these aliens or about the whole uh, UFO um, press releases, you know, you need to pray about it, get into God's word, and see that there is nothing in here about extraterrestrial life forms, okay? Don't let anyone deceive you and tell you otherwise. Um, why is this happening? Well, because the rapture of the church is right around the corner and it can be used to explain away why million of, millions of people have disappeared, that there was a alien abduction and an extraterrestrial invasion and I do believe that during the tribulation, there's going to be demons just walking around and people are going to think that they're like aliens or something. I mean, we've already been seeing it. I um, 
saw a video a few days ago of somewhere in India of this alien looking being walking around on the street and I don't know what that it you know it didn't look like it was someone dressed as an alien because that thing was like super skinny and bony and tall it just doesn't look natural and some people will say that it's like blue beam technology um that it's just a, a picture an image like it's not real um but honestly <laughs> I'm not surprised that demons are just walking around. Um, they are going to be out in the open during tribulation. So just be careful about what you're believing because you don't want to fall into that deception. Now, once saved, always saved. You believe in Jesus just because you fall for a deception or you believe something different in that regard. You believe that aliens are real. That doesn't mean you're not saved. Um, you're still going in the rapture. You're still going to be with Jesus forever. You're still going to be in heaven. Um, nothing's going to take your salvation away. Nothing that you think or do is going to take it away. If you are truly saved and you have placed your faith in Jesus, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. So don't worry about that. But you should be a, you should be watching what's going on in this world and testing it testing the spirits using your discernment that the holy spirit gives you um testing it against the word of god it's very important because there's so much deception there's so many myths um there's so many different uh false lies that you could believe in and the world does not want to believe in jesus satan's going to do everything he can to make it seem like there's other ways to god that there's other ways to heaven um, that's why there's so many different religions. That's why there is this deception. He wants to deceive as many people as possible. Um, so that way, well, I mean, he's already lost. It's not like he, he can't win. He's no rival to God. He's a fallen angel. That's all he is. But um, he wants to deceive as many people as he can because he's mad. He's crazy. Anyways, okay. So enough of that. Let's go into 2 Timothy two, uh, 3, starting in verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. Let's, okay, I know all of that stuff is going on today. Let's backtrack though to what I want to point out. In verse 2, it mentions lover of self. Lover of self, um has become such a big thing lately i see on social media people saying that they're ambassadors for self-love and that they stand for self-love well right here it says that's not a good thing um i think that if you have a mental health disorder or a physical ailment or a uh, depression anxiety you do need to seek help I'm not saying that you should hate yourself, of course. Um, you need to seek help for, for that. But you shouldn't be uh, proclaiming self-love. You know, when you self-love means that you're very arrogant and prideful of who you are. Um, the only thing that we should take joy in is that we are in Christ and that Christ has made us whole and complete and he has saved us. That's it. Um, there's nothing about us that we should be taking pride in. Um, and of course, I just did a video over pride. So this goes hand in hand with that. But self-love is not a good thing. So make sure you do stay away from that. Be very careful. It's very different than self-care. You should take care of yourself. Um, eat right. And if that means eat a pizza every now and then, then hey, I'm for that too. I do that as well. But, you know, eat right, exercise, your body's the temple of God, uh, you do want to take care of it, but you don't want to fall into the self-love 
deception. It's not what you think it is. I see a lot of Christians falling into this and it's very sad. Um, a lot of times these people on social media who promote self-love and say that they're Christians, unfortunately, they also go to these, um, these wealth and prosperity churches and they are posting things all the time about um, such and such pastor or preacher and what they say. And I just cringe and the Holy Spirit inside of me just does a, a flip or a belly flop. I don't know, but I can definitely tell right away um, that the, the Spirit is telling me that what they're saying is false um, and to not believe it. So be very careful with that. So I wanted to also talk to you about this giant a lot of you have already seen videos of it have seen it in the media coverage that there is a structure that was built um, that has a human form and it's able to move its arms and legs with all of the electronic advancements and its whole entire surface is covered with led so it can take on any image that you want it to and from my understanding is that people can actually pay to have their image displayed on it at this time. So right now it's all fun and games, but eventually this thing is gonna be um, also made in 21 cities. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, cause uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, a lot more and done more research on that than I have, but it looks like this could be the Revelation 13 image. Um, are we right about this? I don't know. So this is where I'm saying this is definitely an opinion of mine. Um, it could be, it could not. Honestly, I really don't know what to think. But we do know that as the further we go, uh, more things are going to be revealed to us. More things are going to make sense. The Bible prophecy is going to make sense to us the further we go. Krista K did a really good video about it, I would encourage you to go watch it. Um, she did a video about the giant and she gets into more detail about it. It's very significant that this giant is being made during the time that we are living in. It's not a coincidence. You know, we have, I can't really talk about it because I might be censored, but we have everything else that's been going on in the world and a lot of deception. And then this is being made at the same time. And a lot of people think it's just fun and games. But if you read Revelation 13, it gets very chilling and very eye-opening. So let me start in verse 11. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. This would be the false prophet. It has two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. So it has the appearance of gentleness, but speaks like very empowered. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence, and the first beast is the Antichrist, and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on the earth. More deception. Telling them, to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. So if the image is being made, that it's something that's made with human hands, um, then it very well could be this giant. The giant could be a forerunner to this image. But guys, regardless, I mean, <laughs> this giant could be it. It could be the image. Uh, we don't know. But it's pretty chilling to see that something like this has already been made. And even if it's not it, uh, be, that it could be a forerun forerunner is pretty crazy um, and awesome because that means we are out of here. <laughs> so let me continue on verse 15. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. So it's an idol, idol worship. So uh, people during the tribulation are going to have to decide to either worship the idol or be killed. That simple. It's very straightforward there. Um, we've always um, understood that, at least um, 
you know, because that part is very straightforward. But as far as the rest of the prophecy goes, um, we haven't always understood the technology that would have to go into an image like that being created. Is it going to be empowered by like the demonic, like the supernatural, so it's able to talk? Or is it going to be something that's electronic um, and is man-made, right? So it looks like this very well could be it. So please comment your thoughts on that because I'm really curious as to see what you think. Is it the image? Is it a forerunner? Um, and it's just crazy with everything that's going on, all of this thick deception that this would come out as well. And it's not a coincidence. Um, it's something big. So we need to keep our eyes on that as well. And I'm not saying that... Uh, I have to say this because we should be keeping our eyes on Jesus, right? But when we see Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes and we're watching it, we know Jesus is coming soon. Why are we watching Bible prophecy? Why are we so interested in eschatology? Because it means that we are so close to the rapture of the church and seeing Jesus face to face. That's exciting and that's why I'm watching. And this stuff is just fascinating. I'm really enjoying studying this Bible prophecy with you guys. So please comment your thoughts um, right after that where it talks about the image and the idol. And verse 16, it continues to talk about the mark of the beast. So um, everything is in play. It's in motion. We're putting together these pieces of the puzzle and it's fascinating. Um, and I hope that it does not give you anxiety or scare you in any way because we, I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture in which we won't be here for this, uh, when it plays out, we won't be here for the mark of the beast. We won't be here whenever we are forced, the world is forced to worship an image or be killed. Um, we won't be here for that. So we are going to be in heaven with our bridegroom and celebrating so thank you guys so much for watching this video, tuning in, and I am looking forward to seeing your comments. I am looking forward to seeing you in the air so very soon. So God bless you and shalom and have a good rest of your day.